Well, everyone, hang on a second here. I have been fighting with my ninja charts to get them to load now for about a half an hour. And they are still not fully loaded. So, just a second here. We'll wait for the screen share to uh, to complete. Doggone it. It looks like my computer is going to start locking up here in a minute. I apologize for this. I got to force Ninja Trader 8 to quit. Boy, what a hassle. What a hassle. I was contacting Ben regarding this, and he says that this is a problem with Ninja 8, is that people are complaining about the load times. All right. Can anyone see my screen? Is anything coming through yet? I want to make sure that I've at least got something here. Hmm. All right, no screen. Let's try it again. Okay, now the screen should be coming through. Okay, great. Great. Okay, there's the warning to remind everybody that Trading is potentially risky, so only money you can afford to lose. Always good advice. Bear with me a moment while I log into my connection. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks, Ray, for the uh, for the link you sent about uh, Windows 10. Our little detour rant yesterday. I'll have to play with uh, with Ninja Eight. after the room closes. I wonder if the secret is never shutting it off. 
I don't know. I'm going to have a phone call with Ninja. That's first. I'll assume that it's something on my end, but I'm loading a half a dozen charts. It should not take a half an hour to do. I'm loading many more charts on uh, Ninja seven and you can see it takes a couple of minutes here to load up. Well, that's one way to keep from doing something silly. During opening range. <laughs> yes, Mark says, I, was that a doctor's appointment? I, I would have chimed in on the Windows 10 rant. Don't get me going again. <laughs> All right, let's throw the trade manager on here real quick. Okay, good to go. All righty. Looks like a little bit of a soft start here on the morning. Let's pull up the chart du jour. This is what we've kind of been following. Beautiful trend line bounce yesterday. The market spent most of the day going sideways. We did see a little bit of a rally early and then a little bit of a pullback. You can see, though, yesterday's session very quiet. Remember how I told you volume should be relative to the bar it represents? What do you think? Does that seem like a lot of volume for a relatively small bar? Hmm. We're going to get a little bit of a move. Things are starting to, pressure is starting to build. Don't know which way the move is coming, but now that we have intersected that trend line, it seems like We've piqued the interest of more than a few buyers. Okay, we're back and forth. Seems to have been a bit of an overnight trend to the upside. 
right out of the London Open. Market tailing off a little bit through the Asian session. But more or less, I guess we're trading a little bit below where the market left off yesterday. Not much. I don't know if I want to classify these recent swings as a sideways range yet. You know that when we see those sideways ranges. We can bracket them and uh, not trade the breakouts, but kind of get the market in a bit of a in a bit of a bind. Well, while we're waiting, I wonder, oh no, <laughs> am I going to screw something up here? The market's really, really kind of constipated right now. We've got a lot of yellow bars here on the Hawk. Um, our Falcon filter breaking up. The Falcon really not going anywhere either. Uh, not yet anyway. So it looks like we're holding pretty well on this primary resistance line. All right, gang. Going to launch a little bit of a poll here. And everybody, pay attention. The market's not doing anything right now. But I would really appreciate your input on this. It'll only take uh, a few seconds. I'll only run it for a minute. And I can't see who's voting on what. But if you could take just a second. What the heck? Wow, I'm having some issues here this morning.
Oh, okay. I guess you can see the. I'm the one who can't see the uh, the window. All right. Just uh, a few more seconds. Waiting on a few more people to chime in. I know I only gave you two choices because I know if I asked, do you want education and trade calls? You would probably all say education and trade calls, please. Hmm. Well, it's a fairly even mix. There's uh, still nothing going on in the marketplace, so I'll just let this go here. We're going to close it out at the uh, end of the second minute, so get your vote in and look at that. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much for your input. There we go. It was a, uh, a pretty even split. Interesting. Well, you know, it helps me a lot. It, it does, because if the room was leaning heavily one way or the other, well, then, of course, that's where I would place more of my attention. But I will assume that since it's a fairly even mix that, well, we'll kind of stay with the status quo. We'll focus on uh, education as opportunity allows and we'll throw in a few trades as opportunities allow. Uh, right now, we're not getting a whole lot opportunity wise. It's important, I think, to remember, you know, if you open up your chart and this is what you're looking at, it's important to recognize that this market is sideways. Sideways markets are difficult to trade, and here's the reason why. If we kind of deem this to be our trading range, well, heck, even if we go deeper, if we do our trading range like so. Here is where the sellers are. They're going to be hiding around this top third, top quarter. Buyers are going to be down here. Everything in the middle is no man's land. But this, not really the shape of a traditional trading range just yet. We're more of a trading channel at this point. In fact, just out of curiosity, I wonder how close we are to the trend line. Look at that. And sometimes what you can do is you can take the trend line and you can actually move it to the other side as well. And visually, you'll get a little bit of a trading channel. Now, it's too early to tell whether the market's going to respect this channel. Remember, these lines, they don't exist except on your chart. their visual cues to help try to figure out what the market's going to do next, but really the market will do what the market will do. Okay, getting a little bit of a giddy up now. We're almost to the end of opening range and 
I don't know. Is it too early to call the market bullish? Well, that was a very, very strong move, it turns out. All the way up here. Now, what's interesting is if this, in fact, is building into a trading channel. Then the overshoot of the trend line should actually have a bit of a bearish effect on the market. You would think it would be more bullish but really it's not see what our trading band is doing well it's getting up there it's around 50 ticks all rallied all the way to the next resistance zone No pullback.
Okay, the band a little bit broader now. We're up to 60 some odd ticks. We've violated the resistance zone. We've violated the imaginary trend line here. I would be open to a possible short. We'll see whether we get a, a bit of a retest here. Maybe get a quick little number two signal on the Raptor. I don't want to get too cocky on the short side. This is a very, very bullish market. Remember the problem with going counter trend, besides the fact that counter trend trades are less reliable, is that very often you block yourself from taking a with trend trade. That's too bad. I was I was just about to get on board that number three signal. I gave it a second thought and I thought, no, maybe I'll wait for the pullback, but then they did that. You can see here by the timestamp, it all unfolded rather quickly. Didn't really give me a second chance. Well, not the first move I have missed and very likely not to be the last either. So what I'm looking for now, you can see the Eagles already got a warning dot, a sale a warning dot. On these counter trend type moves, you're not going to produce a sell signal on the eagle. But these sell warning dots are really all you're going to get. If you were really aggressive, you could actually be shorting right now if you want to take the market short. What I would like to see is at least one bullish bar or something resembling some bullishness in the market. And here too, I may end up catching myself waiting a little bit too long. But I suppose if this channel is going to hold Market has a long way to go. Nice macro pullback here on the Hawk. But like I said, we got a little bit of bearish pressure on the market, maybe. I think a move back to the hard edge somewhere around 66. 75 definitely plausible all right here on the falcon or pardon me the raptor this is just a take advantage of the very broad cloud type trade now remember it's counter trend the upshot is with counter trend trades is you can keep your risk relatively small I would normally recommend taking single contracts on all counter trend positions. Again, it just has to do with the nature of the trade. Even though the target is the hard edge somewhere here around 66.75, you know what? I think I would be just as happy to nab my $100 out of the trade. If there is going to be a full on reversal here then there should be at least one more opportunity to get in okay so there we go we got a quick little hiccup in the raptor this isn't going to print as a number two signal i don't think because the retest was not enough 
but that's essentially what it is we're looking at. Stops need to go above the high because this is where you know you're definitely wrong about the trade. Come on, there we go, a little bit more. You can do it. Just sneak on down there. Don't stop. Oh, getting a little bit of a reaction off that first hard edge. No! <laughs> Get away! <laughs> yeah, stinkers. So close. Almost made the profit objective. And maybe I was a little bit too quick with my uh, break even on that. Maybe I should have given it a little bit more room. Had I gotten in earlier, right? Had I gotten in on a break below this signal bar, with the warning dot, I would have made my profit objective. But that's all right. The, the break even. Attempt still better than a loss. And like I said, I don't want to get too cute here because uh, I'm going to end up blocking myself from a with trend trade. Here we go again with a um, quick little retest. I think I'm going to just let this one go in favor of uh, a better opportunity. But here on the Hawk, we had a nice little macro pullback. Spotted that too late. That could have nabbed a couple dollars out of that. Oh, we got ourselves a bit of a late filter entry signal here on the on the Falcon as well, and maybe even a second push on the signal. Oh, let me fix that. Now, ideally, with the second push, I I want to see a bull bar form. There it is. There's the reaction bar. Now, this late filter entry, the trend line is relatively steep. Normally, on a late filter entry signal, the flatter the trend line, the better it will be, or the more likely it will reach its profit objective. And I'm a little bit late getting into this one as well. So I'll roll my break even up a little bit. The problem, there may be a bigger test of the extreme before the market reverses and heads lower. That's the problem. Oh, come on, you guys. See, now I've blocked myself from taking the with trend trade. We've broken what may have been a great big bull flag.
If I can get a couple of bearish bars, I will roll my stops in relatively tight. I'll bring them in above that swing right there. There we go. This late filter entry signal a little bit flatter. Let's see if the signal actually trips. The late filter entry is when your trend line never changes color, but your filter goes out of sync and comes back into sync and you produce a signal. That's your late filter entry signal. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Now, if we take out the low here, if we see the market tick, say, 66.78. Come on. The momentum just is not here today. All right, I don't like that bar trying to get bullish, so I'm going to bring my stops in a little bit more. I'll put them in just above that swing high. It may prove to be too tight. Typically, I try to leave my stops two swings back. But the lack of momentum here this morning is a bit of a concern so all i'm doing is anything with a bit of a wick to it that's where i'm going to hide my stop and if i get tagged out well so be it Hit the break even. Getting close to the 6675 zone, which was where the hard edge was parked. No. Oh, they're gonna, so close. What a struggle. Nope, couldn't give it to me. Well, we're back to the hard edge, and when we hit the hard edge uh, here on the Eagle and the Raptor, we do anticipate some sort of reaction. Now we need to consider if this is just a very, very large bear flag. or bull flag, pardon me. If it is, then uh, we need to be on the lookout for a possible rally. Okay, we're currently against the ATR. We've produced a red bar buy signal. See if we get a second push opportunity on this. 
So the second push, all it means is we allow the signal to engage, we see where the market reacts, and then we use that reaction bar as our signal bar. The idea being we get into the trade when there's proof of uh, momentum. Now, the downside with using this particular strategy is that uh, sometimes you can end up getting in too late. The market can move too far without you. And you're kind of left on the sidelines. The upshot is you should stay on the right side of the market more often. Darn it. Ooh, you stinkers. Are you not going to even give me one reactionary bar? Really? Really? Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Every time it looks like they're going to give us a bit of a reactionary bar, they just keep on pushing higher. Well, you know, the way to make the market go lower is to actually just buy in here. <laughs> This is the first micro macro cross higher right here. This signal, the macro line was still out of sync. And it's just kissing its profit objective. Oh, there we go. Hit our profit target which would have been a quick little scalp. And now I'm wondering. How much is left in the market? Nuts. I waited too long. And there they go. Well, that's a couple of trades I missed this morning. Even though this one did not print as a number three signal, and I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, yes, I see why, because the cloud was out of sync here. It did encounter the hard edge. It was still a number three signal of sorts, even though the clouds were ever so slightly out of sync.
Oh, well. We'll get the next one. If we sort of deem this now to be a bit of a trading range, it's not much of a trading range, but a little bit of a range. We can look for a breakout above here. We can actually just park a, a just in case order to buy up here. So this is the breakout, this is the retest. Market moving fairly low. Here are the hawk now already with the first micro macro cross lower. I oh doc got it. You know what? I'm just gonna punch in with an order here and I'm gonna do a single. Oops, wrong button. Let's try that again. And I'm gonna try to stretch this one out a bit. Oh, let's stretch it out a lot. They're going. I'm just going to roll this bar for bar now. Okay. So a first micro macro cross, I was a little bit late getting in. I was going to try to take it below here, but it just started moving too fast. Just had to pop in with the sell order. And look at that, back to the trend line again. So we saw the trend line break, which actually puts a bit of a bearish spin on the market. And then we see the trend line come back. And now it's testing the bottom end again. So we can do the same thing in reverse. Once we see uh, that the market reacts or if it reacts, we can toss in a, an order to short. Come on, give me one more bull bar. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to throw my just in case order to sell below here. What we've seen is we've seen the market break the low. Here now is the retest. We'll see if they can continue lower. The other day we were talking about measured moves. So if this is one move, wherever the market starts to um, reverse again, that will be our measured move lower. That will be our target. Now, the markets don't always you know, respond to measured moves, but still it gives you an objective.
and so we'll throw a target down here. It looks like around somewhere around 66.55, maybe, if this turns out to be the turning point. Yeah, here on the Eagle now, we're producing a trend change signal. We're going to have comparable signals on our other tools. Oh, the Falcon actually got a green trend line in there. The Hawk working a four arrow consolidation. And here on the Raptor, we already have an early number one, or not an early number one signal, but a number one signal printing as well. I'm okay waiting for the breakout though. So here's the move lower, here's the retest. In fact, if I hurry, I can probably set it up like so. There we go. Now, depending on how aggressive you want to be with this, the theory is that now that we've seen the breakout, we've seen the retest, the market should resume the downtrend. If it doesn't resume the downtrend, the market will head higher, in which case you could throw a buy order in right there as well. So this is what I mean about when we see the breakouts that the market actually gets itself into a bit of a tight spot. I was wondering whether we were producing a number two signal, and we are. Oh, I don't know if I want to. If I get a bear bar here or two, I will bracket the trade. I don't know if I want to do it just yet. Ooh, such a chicken. All right. Here we'll throw a buy order up here. We'll throw a short order down here. So what I'm looking at is the ATR. Okay, well, they filled me to the long side. See if I can get a stop in play. There we go. I can delete that one. Oh, is this going to be too soon? Come on, give me a little bit of room here. Yes, tinkers. See, what's going on is now that the clouds have crossed, there's that typical little pullback. And then if the market continues with trend, we're actually going to produce a number one signal. See, that's what happens. How you get your number one signal is the clouds cross, there's a pullback, and then the market tries to resume the trend or the emerging trend. Okay. Clouds cross, there's a pullback, and then you, the market tries to resume the trend. Signal parameters are met. You get the 
warning dot, and then you get the, the triangle on hash mark telling you that everything is complete, and then away you go. But we're starting to hit a bit of a sideways drift. Okay, I suppose now we have the market cornered maybe a little bit better. So I can throw my just-in-case order to buy up here, my just-in-case order to short down here. And, you know, it's still dicey. We're still in the middle of this whole trading range mess. The sellers are going to be up here trying to knock the buyers back down. Oh, see, here we go. We've got our number one signal to buy. Um, Frank's asking, can we call this a bullish triangle? Um, uh, yeah. You know, the, the whole thing about trading patterns is, it's just a, an attempt to forecast what the market's trying to do, right? We know head and shoulder patterns tend to behave a certain way. Uh, flag patterns tend to behave in a certain way. Triangles, pendants, you know, the list goes on. The market's right now very, very conflicted. I think the move of the day came right out of the open, right there, that run up. After that, we've just kind of been stuck. The Eagle trading band getting very, very tight. I bet the Hawks got loads of chop. Yep, it does. Back and forth. Decent swings, though. You know, a nice first micro macro cross lower here. First micro macro cross higher. Another first micro macro cross higher. It's not that the opportunities haven't been there. Now we're getting a, another first micro macro cross to short. But generally speaking, I don't like to see... I don't like to see, you know, too many trends on a chart. Ideally, one trend. I will tolerate two trends, but when, you know, I start looking at a chart and just keeps waffling back and forth, that makes it pretty tough to trade. Falcon giving us a trend change signal. The first micro macro cross spoiled here with the yellow bars on the hawk. The raptor. The trading band is just twisted up like a rope. The 
Let's see if I can get a second push on this uh, Falcon trade. There we go. It's only one bar. Ideally, I'd like two. But it's the second push on this signal. The idea is, once again, we see where the market's reacting. We use that reactionary bar now as the signal bar. Unfortunately, you end up offering up, in this case, about 10 ticks just to get your entry. Did they slip me? They did, too, you stinkers. I want my tick back. There we go. The lack of any directional momentum here is impressive. Let's see, here we got another bearish break and now the bullish reaction. Oh, are they going to take me out here? Wow, big, big pushback. Now we'll see if the sellers got anything. I don't typically reverse on my positions, but that's what I'm going to do here. If I get tagged out, the eagle trade will fill. But the whole trading range thing is just getting so constipated. This is the joy of trying to trade in a trading range. Woohoo! <laughs>
could not be more neutral. Well, I'm going to take a little bit out of this trade. I'm resisting rolling my stops too early. But if I can get a couple of bear bars, there we go. I'm going to squeeze this trade now. They're going to have to go. They're going to, sellers, if they're serious, they got to trade below this 66.72 zone. You can see the bullish pushback as they struggle. Come on. Ah, nuts. Well, I don't need a second bullish bar. If I get two bull bars, I'll probably get three. So I'm tightening my stops a little bit more. The momentum definitely back and forth here, as you can see. Right, just no real direction. And there you go. Well, it didn't work out and it was probably a little bit too aggressive on my part. That's the kind of trade that I would consider to be a good loss. You know, it didn't work out, but I did everything right, or almost right. If I did it right, it wouldn't have turned into a loser. So now we got this little sideways range going on.
Well, it looks like they're going to be content to uh, trade back and forth there. I thought maybe we were going to see a bit of a breakout, but nope. And it looks like that's kind of what we're doing right now. You know, so long as the market is in the sideways range, we're really not going to get any decent trades. It does appear, I'm not sure why it's holding on like it is. Um, I don't think we're waiting on any reports or anything. Well, I think what we're going to do, um, you know, this is the trading equivalent to watching paint dry. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to button up shop here. Uh, if you are going to continue to trade, this is what you got to wait for. You got to wait for the breakout and the retest. Once you have that, you'll know where you can place your order. Likewise, here to the top side, your breakout, your retest. The idea is that once the market retests, it will resume in the direction of the breakout. If not, it will just go back inside this trading range and bump around a whole lot more. All right, so don't get too anxious to get into a trade. The market very, very conflicted here at the moment. All right, gang, have yourselves a great day. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye for now.